come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of the imagination. My tale is about greed, the lust for gold. It has been said about the hunger for money that it is an overwhelming appetite that feeds on itself and can never be sated. Even the most honorable man can feel the hunger pangs that are caused by poverty. I thought of you trying to make a home for us out of the few dollars I earn. I was wet and tired and angry and I kept thinking he has so much and locks it away. Not even spending anything for his own comfort. Keeping it from us who need it so badly. What are you saying, Hans? I'm saying that in my mind a red dot began to form. And it grew and grew till it turned into a word I could read. Hans! That word was kill. Our mystery drama, The Return of Anatole Chevenik, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Alexander Scorby. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was a cold, rainy evening in late fall that found Hans Chevenik pressing forward, leaning into the wind down the dark side street in the poor section of the town where his uncle Anatole lived and ran his junk business. It was with a feeling of relief that he made the shelter of the overhang of his uncle's porch. He paused, more out of reluctance to face the man than fatigue from his long, wet walk. Oh, you! Wonder you bothered to come at all. I got a good mind to slam the door in your face and tell you to go back where you came from. I'm sorry, Uncle Anatole. I'm I... sorry, Uncle Anatole. Well, come in. Come in and shut the door. You're getting my house all wet. When I ask you to come at 7, I don't mean 7.30. But I don't get through with my other job until 6.15. Only takes 30 minutes to get here on the bus. Uncle, it was raining. All right, all right, raining. I know that. So let's drop that and get down to work. You're to go down into the cellar and start bringing up all the copper scrap piled up there. Then I uncle, want you... Uncle, uncle... Uh, well, what is it uh, now? Uh, Vicky made a sandwich for me. I haven't had my supper yet. Always some excuse to stall. I'm not stalling. Well, well, go ahead. Eat, eat. Don't waste more time talking about it. Yeah. Well, 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 what have you got there? Just some bread and a piece of cheese. Mm. Curse to me that I haven't had anything since this morning. <laughs> oh, well, well... Would you share it with me, Uncle? I don't mind if I do. Here. Mm. Mm. Cheese is kind of stale. That's all we had in the house. Well, it's better than nothing. Uncle, uh, I, I've been meaning to ask you something. As long as you don't ask for money. Uh, that's just it. I'm uh, afraid it might be. Well... I don't want to hear about your troubles. I've got enough of my own. You've got lots of money, Uncle. Who told you that? Who told you? Well, you did. You, you tell me every time I come here how much you've got. Not exactly. Not exactly how much. No, but you said it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A great deal. More than you've ever dreamed of. And it'll all be yours, Hans, my boy. I'm making you my heir. <laughs> Make it? Well, you, you said it was already in your will. Will? Will! Said maybe I'd leave it all to you, or maybe... You didn't say maybe. You, you said you were going to give it all to me. I was your only heir. Well, there's still my nephew Jamie to be considered, son of my favorite well, sister. You said you didn't like him. Never said that. You did. You said you didn't like him because he'd become an actor. Nothing to do with it. Acting is an honorable profession. At least he has a job. More than I can say for other members of this family. Oh, look, I've got a job. Shoe repair. Part-time. Can't make a decent living. Come over here, get a few dollars, sponging on your relatives. Well, you, you've never given me a cent I didn't earn. Not a red cent. Isn't because you ain't asked. I've enough. asked you because I needed it, Uncle Anatole. Look, Vicky and I, we've got so little. 
It isn't easy to beg. I don't want to hear any more of this jabbering. Now, now that you're finished with your supper, down to the cellar with you and start bringing up that cup of scrap. Get moving, get moving. Don't you look at me that way. I know what's on your mind. I can read you like a book. But think of this, Hans, my boy. Before you go too far, you don't know where the money's hid. <laughs> this is what protects me from your evil intentions. You'd get nothing because you'd never find the money. Never. Yeah, Vicky. Sorry I woke you. Oh, well, I couldn't sleep anyway. I was worried about you. What time is it? Nearly two in the morning. I'm soaked. It's still raining. Oh, but take off your wet things, dear. Yeah. Uncle Anatole kept you late tonight. Worked me late, you mean? He's taking advantage of you, Hans. I know it. He knows it. Paying you so little and holding that inheritance in front of your nose... Like a carrot in front of a donkey, so you'll go on working. That's what I'm turning into, a donkey, a beast of burden. Suppose he decides to give it to somebody else when he dies. He can't. What do you mean? He can give it to anyone he wants to. To your cousin Jamie? To anyone, to charity? He wouldn't give it to charity. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. As for cousin Jamie, I know something he doesn't know. Jamie is dead. Dead? Yes. When? How? About six months ago, he was killed in an automobile accident in San Francisco. I wrote and got all the details. Car caught fire after crashing. He was identified from papers in his wallet. And you're bound to get the money. When? Well, when he... Dies? Couldn't you persuade him to give you some of the money now? I suggested that tonight. He flew into a rage. Accused me of planning his death. Oh, he didn't mean that. He meant it. He as much as said the only thing that was keeping me from killing him was the fact that I didn't know where the money was hidden. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's almost comical. That's the way I felt about it when he said it. I was hurt that he would even joke about anything so horrible. Oh, Hans. Knowing you the way I do, knowing the kind of man you are, how kind you are, how gentle. The whole thing's utterly impossible. Is it? Hans. You know... Coming back on the bus, I thought of what he'd said. And I, I thought of you trying to make a home for us out of the few dollars I earned. I, I, I was wet and tired and angry inside. I kept thinking, he has so much and he locks it away, not even spending anything for his own comfort, keeping it from us who need it. What are you saying? I'm saying that in my mind, a small red dot began to form. It grew and grew... And then it turned into a word that I could read. Hans! That word was kill. Hello? May I speak to Mr. Crandall, please? Hans Shevenick calling. Miss Crandall? Yeah, I, I got your letter. I, I know I'm ten days late with the payment. Yes, sir, I know that, uh, what the contract reads, but... Oh, no, sir, I, I, I wouldn't want that to happen. But, but you see, well, I'm expecting a sum of money, m money owed to me. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thursday at 4 p.m. sharp. I'll be there, Mr. Crandall. You, you can depend on it. You'd like to see me dead and in my grave so you could have my money. No, no, I... I never said that, Uncle Anatole. I can read your thoughts, Hans. And they are filled with hate for me. I am your heir. It doesn't matter if you like me. I'm your only heir. I'll get your money. Jamie will get it. He's dead. Killed in an auto accident. You're lying. Lying to deceive me. But you'll never get the money. Oh, you miser. You've taken advantage of me. You've worked me hard. You've paid me so little it hardly mattered. Now I'm going to get what you owe me. Put down that gun. Put it down. 
you can get me the money now. Now or I'll kill you. You won't find me. It's my money. It's my money. You promised it to me. I earned it. Wait up. What? 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 Vicky, Vicky. Is that you? What are you doing at Uncle Anatole's house? Hans, you're at home. What? You've been having a bad dream. A dream? A dream. Oh, thank the Lord. I'm so glad it was just a dream. You were talking about Uncle Anatole. Oh, heaven help me. I I, I dreamt that I, I, I was going to kill him. Oh, my poor Hans. What a terrible dream. You could never do such a thing. No, darling, I... I could never do any such thing. Hans! Yes, Uncle Anto? Not finished yet? No. How long do you have to stall when I'm not watching you? I wasn't stalling. Well, leave that iron scrap and come upstairs out the cellar. I got something for you to do here. Uncle Anatole, I wonder if you'd mind if I let, left a little earlier tonight. You, you can take it off the money that, with well, the money I've got coming to me. I don't mind. I don't mind if you never come back for that matter. Work too much for you? No, no, please. Look, Vicky is sick. She was running a fever when I left. Sure, sure. Here, take your money and get out. And don't bother to come back. What? Oh, please, Uncle Anatole. It's only because I'm worried about Vicky. Sure, sure. Pick up your stuff and get out. You don't believe me. Look, Uncle, I need the work. I'll come early tomorrow there and make... There ain't going to be no tomorrow for you, Hans. I don't want to see your face again. But, Uncle... Out! Out! You understand? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. For years, you've held the inheritance money over my head to make a slave of me. But now I realize the truth. There is no money. There never was. You've lied to me to get me to work for you. No money, eh? No money, you say? <laughs> well, now that I know your true feelings about me, I'm going to show you the money. What? I'm going to show you what you've lost with your suspicions, your nasty, evil suspicions. Follow me. You're not more than ten feet away from your inheritance. What? That you will never get. Here, give me a hand with this big chest. Push it. Uncle. Just shut up and give me a hand with this heavy old chest. Come on. I, I'm, I'm sorry that Just I... Just keep I, I your mouth up. closed and help me push. Come on. All right. Push. Nah, 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 nah. That's enough. Now, scrape that dirt where the chest was standing. What? Go ahead. There's a trap door here. Yes, a trap door. Here, here's the key. Take it. Now open the trap door. Now, hold up this lamp. Oh. What do you see in that box? Gold. Gold coins. All gold. That's right, my boy. All gold coins. A fortune. You didn't believe me, eh? Now you will never touch it. Never have even one small bit of it. Well, what, what good is it to you? What can you do with it? Now that you've seen it, I'll enjoy it more. Help me push this chest back. Uh, come on, I can't do it alone. No, I won't help you. No. Not until you give me what's coming to me. Don't make me lose my temper. Do it yourself, you old miser. So, I'll make you work, you stupid oaf. Put down that cane. Your last chance. Do what I ask. I swear, or... if you strike me, I'll kill you. Threaten me, will you? I'll show you. Stop. Stop. Threaten me? You haven't got the nerve to do anything with your life. Get out of my house, you weakling. You coward. I've had enough from you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Uncle. Uncle. 
speak to me. No. You're not dead. You're not dead. <laughs> And so the timid rabbit discovers he has fangs and claws. In that moment of decisive action, there was one thing that did not occur to Hans Chevenik. How could he explain what he had done to his wife, who believed in him and trusted him? How could he tell her that he had killed? Well, of course, his conscience troubled him. But deep in his heart was a feeling that he had grown. A secret feeling of elation. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. When Hans Chevenik returned home that night, he slipped into the house as silently as he could. He knew he couldn't face Vicky with the mark of Cain on his forehead. The next morning, he left before she awakened for the same reason. When he returned home from work that evening... He thought he had himself sufficiently under control to look her in the eye. Anne, is that you? Yes, Vicky. Well, come into the kitchen. I've got something on the stove. Oh, it sure smells good. Well, I made a little stew for you. It's ready any time you are. Sit down. Sure, sure, any time. Tastes good on a cold, blustery day like this. Vicky. You're putting it all on my plate again. I've eaten all no, you, you did the same thing yesterday. Said you'd eaten when you hadn't. Well, you work hard, dear. You you need more than I do. Nonsense. Now, sit right down. We're going to share this. Now, start eating. Oh, Hans. Please forgive me. I don't want to Oh, I, I know, dear. Things have been very tough for the last year or so. But I tell you, they're going to get better. Look, I, I've had a bit of good luck. Look. Look at this. What is it? What is it? It's a $20 gold piece. Oh, I've never seen one before. Well, the government stopped mending them years ago. They're collector's items now. This little bit of gold worth $20? Well, worth a lot more than that. I'm giving it to you. A present. A present? Well, what could I do with we'll it? Keep it. Or sell it. It'll bring quite a bit more. Well over $200, I think. Hans, where did you get it? I, I, uh, I found it. I was on the bus this morning, and I looked down, and there was this little gold glint right under my feet. Did you report that you found it? Uh, no. No, no I'll go around to the bus company lost and found tomorrow and report it. Uh, hey, I, I, I almost forgot I... I really have some big news for you. I've been offered a new job. A good one. Really? Who offered it? Well, you remember I, I told you about that uh, Mr. Congrave who came into the shop to have some shoes repaired? Congrave? Yeah. No, I don't remember you mentioning him before. Well, sure I did. He, well, he got to talking with me and he sort of liked me and said if ever I wanted to change my job to look him up. I can't recall you ever saying anything about it. Well, sure I did. You, look, you just don't listen. So, anyway, and he, and he walks this morning and says he's been thinking about me for a long time and that a good job has just opened up with his company in Arswell. I'd be a foreman in, in, in charge of about 25 men. Hans, this whole thing is sort of a... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's come so fast. Now, now, listen to me, Vicky. We've had so much bad luck that you're afraid to believe the good luck. This Mr. Congrave liked me, and he's offered me a chance. But he doesn't even know you. Just talked to you that one. He had a hunch about me. Honey, look, let, let's not turn this one good thing that's happened to us into a question and answer game. Now, now, there's only one thing about the job you might not like. I'm going to be away from you for a couple of months until the job is set. You, you understand? Well, if that's the way it is. That's the way it has to be. Oh, come on. Let me see a smile on your pretty face. <laughs> That's better. Things are going to be all right from now on. Trust me. Yes, can I help you? Oh, are you Mr. Shevenick? Anatole Shevenick? No, I I'm his nephew, Hans. Well, this is Anatole Shevenick's house, isn't it? That's right. He in? 
I have a registered letter for him. It has to be signed. No, he's not in. In fact, he's he's, uh, he's left. He's left the country. Oh. You know, I've been delivering mail to him for three years now, and I never saw him once. Talked to him through the door one time. It, it told me to push the mail under the door, but never opened it. Yes, yes, he, he had some peculiar habits. Well, in my job, you get to see a lot of strange... You said had? What? You said had, as though he was dead. What, did I? Yeah. Well, well, I, I didn't mean it that way. He, he's gone off to uh, South Africa, Johannesburg. Spent most of his early life there, you know. He, he felt he was sort of, well, going home, so to speak. Uh, the letter. What, letter? Yeah, registered. Reason I came. Got to be signed for. Uh, well, guess you could do it. I, well, I don't like signing his name. Oh, well, just sign your own. It'll be all right. Uh, right here. Okay. Thanks. Here. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Myself, that was a bad slip. I wonder if he was suspicious. Hello. Hello. May I speak with Anatole Shevnik, please? Well, he—he's not here. What do you mean he's not there? He's gone. He—he's left the country. Gone? He didn't say anything to me about leaving. I spoke to him just two days ago. Yeah, yeah, it was all very sudden. He. uh... If he left, probably after you talked to him. Very strange. He said nothing about any plans to go away. Where did he go? Africa. South Africa. What? South Africa? Uh, yes. Uh, you see, he'd spent the better part of his early life there, in uh, Johannesburg. I never heard that. Who are you? I'm his nephew, Hans Shevenick. Oh, Hans Shevenick. Yes. Well, 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 I was... Really looking for you when I called here. What? Well, looking for me? Who, who is this? Surely you can't have forgotten so soon. I thought you would be in Oswell this morning, starting on your new job. What? H- how did you know? Oh, oh, you must have spoken with my wife. She, she, she expected me to be there. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, I would have been there if it hadn't been for the, the, uh, well, the sudden departure. Of Uncle. Anatole? Yes, it's, it, well, it sort of changed my plans. Hmm. Strange the way you said that. What? Sudden departure. Well, what, what's so strange about that? It's a, it's a common expression. It is also used when speaking of someone dying. Suddenly. Not at all. N- not at all. Is sudden it... departure, sudden death. See what I mean? Well, I, I, know, I never use it that way. I, I meant my uncle left the country. He, he went, went away. <laughs> Get back to the reason for my call. When may I expect you in Oswell? What? Expect me in Oswell? Or have you given up the entire plan? Who are you? Who am I? Yes. <laughs> Surely you must be joking. I'm your new boss, George Congrave. <laughs> Me, dear Hans. Oh, Hans! Oh, I wasn't expecting you when I heard the front door open. It's all right, Vicky. Hans, what happened? What do you mean? Well, you were supposed to be in Arsville, weren't you? When you left the house Wednesday morning, you said you were catching the bus to Arsville to take the new job. Well, uh. But you didn't go. N- no, I, uh. I stopped off to tell Uncle Anatole that I wouldn't be back, that, that, that I was quitting my job with him. Oh, that was very foolish. There wasn't another bus till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. How were you to get to Oswell in the new job? Uh, look, Ricky, I, I, I suppose it didn't make good sense to stop off without thinking how I was going to get to Oswell afterwards. Well, I was I, so I, I... surprised when the next morning Mr. Congrave came to the door and wanted to know where you were. Congrave came to the door? What did he look like? Middle-aged, nicely dressed... As for you, I knew who he was immediately, and I got terribly worried about Vicky, you. Vicky, Vicky, how did you know it was Mr. Congrave? Well, I knew, that's all. I just knew. Did he tell you his name? Did, did he introduce himself first? I, I don't know. Uh, how could I remember that? 
Suddenly, I was calling him Mr. Congrave, that's all. Vicky, listen to me. It's very important for me to know whether you called him Mr. Congrave or he told you that his name was Congrave. I can't see that it makes any difference. It was Mr. Congrave, and he was asking for you. Okay, all right. What do you want to know? He wanted to speak to you. He seemed very concerned. Perhaps because you failed to show up for work. Did he ask about Uncle Anatole? Uncle Anatole? Yes. How would Mr. Congrave know him? Well, evidently, he does. He knows him very well. He, he called me there at Uncle Anatole's house. I don't understand. Now, what does it all mean? I don't know, Vicky. I don't... I, I wish I did. Is that the house? Yeah. Well, it isn't in very good repair, is it? Uncle Anatole never would spend a cent if he could help it. Here, up these stairs. Hans, shouldn't we knock? Well, there's nobody there. Uncle Anto couldn't answer. He, he, he's gone away. Oh, the place is a mess, isn't it? Pretty bad. Wait left the light on. I'm glad I decided to come back here with you. I'd be able to get some semblance of order restored. Is Uncle Anatole selling this house? I, I guess so. He said he wasn't coming back. Then it makes sense to clean it up. Better chance of selling it. You wanted me to come here with you, didn't you, Hans? Well, I, I didn't want to come alone, Ricky. Now, just a broom and a bucket and water and I'll start. Have any idea where he keeps the cleaning things? No, dear. You'll just have to search around till you find them. I'm going down cellar for a while. All right, Hans. Oh, Hans. What is it, Vicky? What have you done about Mr. Congrave? What do you mean? Well, what about the job? You were supposed to start three days ago. What will Mr. Congrave think? I, look, I don't care what he thinks. Now, now look, look, please stop asking questions, Vicky. All you do is question me. But I don't understand what's going on, Hans. Neither do I. But there's something in this house. Still here. And it belongs to me. And I'm going to get it. Hans. Huh? Hans, wake up. What? what? Hans, someone's in the house. I can hear him. In the house? You, you sure? I heard him. Listen. There. Hear it? Yeah, but uh, this is an old house. Old houses creak at night. It's just that. I, I heard something. Someone bumped into something in the dark. Well, I, I don't believe there's anyone there, but I'll, I'll go take a look. You have a flashlight? No, I'll just switch on the lights downstairs. Do you want me to come with you? Well, if you want to, come on. I'll feel along the wall for the light switch. Hold on to my arm. Here, I've got it. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. That's probably just your imagination. You know, th those noises... No, I heard something. Well, no one's in the house as far as I can see. Come on, let's let's go back to bed. All right, Hans. I'm so... The phone. At this hour? I'll get it. You, you stay here. Yes? Hello? Anatole Shevenick? He's not here. Oh, he's there. He's there, all right. But he isn't able to answer. Is that what you mean? Look, please, what do you want? I told you. I want to speak with Anatole Shevenick. He can't speak with you. He's not here. Is this Hans Shevenick? Yes, this is Hans. Hans? This is George Congrave. No. No, no there is no George Congrave. He's just a lie. A lie I told my wife. There is no George Congrave. And so in a lie told by Hans Chevenik, an imaginary man is conjured up to haunt him. To the tortured man, the unreal has more substance than the real. With the guilt of a murder on his conscience and his fear of the apparition that follows him relentlessly, can his mind stay in balance? I'll be back shortly with Act Three.
after his frightening experience on the telephone with a man who calls himself George Congrave, Hans tried to compose himself and put up a brave front for Vicky. But he failed miserably. He felt an overwhelming urge to confess his crime, throw himself at her feet, and ask for the comfort of her forgiveness. But he was afraid that she would be so repelled by the horror of what he'd done that she would turn from him forever. He got out of bed and paced the floor. Hans. Huh? What, what, Vicky? Don't you want to talk to me? No. Come here, Hans. Sit on the bed, please. Oh, Vicky, what's the point of talking, is it? All that complicated story about the job in Arswell. Lies. And about Mr. Congrave. Lies. There's no such person. It's just a name that came to me. I used it, that's all. But I met him. Talk to him. You've talked to him on the telephone. There's no such person. It's a lie, I tell you. He doesn't exist. But he does. We both know he does. Vicky, please stop insisting on that. Or I'll... My mind is spinning. Vicky, please. Oh, Hans. You've got something terrible on your conscience. First, there was that gold coin that you said you found on the bus. Now, you didn't find it, did you? No, that... That was a lie, too. Then I know it all now. It all fits together. I know what it is you've done. Oh, my God. You've stolen your uncle's money. What? <laughs> oh, stolen. Stolen, if that were all. No, Vicky, it's worse. Much worse. I've committed a murder. I killed him. I killed him. Vicky, you still here? Of course, darling. I must have fallen asleep. But what are you doing here? What? Look, I told you everything, everything, and you're still here. I, I, I thought you'd run, run away from you, Vicky. I wanted to tell you sooner, but. I was afraid I'd lose you. You don't have much faith in me, do you? I love you. And I would fight for you and stay with you no matter what you'd done. Even murder? You haven't committed a murder. Vicky, I... You just think you have. It's all confused in your mind. You remember your dream? You dreamt you killed your uncle. Yes, but... but it was Vicky... just a dream. You remember? You woke up and said... Thank God it wasn't true. But, Vicky, it came true. That dream came true. I, I strangled him. And then I took his gold, and I put him in the hole and pushed the big chest back over the trap door. Hans, you were dreaming. No, I wish I were. No, I did it. Listen to me. Now, try to control your thoughts. Now, just say to yourself, it never happened. Oh, Vicky. It Vicky. never happened. You just imagined it or dreamt it. It happened. I killed him. I pushed him into the trap in the cellar floor, and he's still there. He's still there. Hans, did you move the chest away by yourself when Uncle Anatole said he would show you the money? Oh, no, we both pushed. It was too heavy for me to do alone. Then I opened the trap with the key he gave me, and I saw the gold. I couldn't believe my eyes. And he laughed. He told me that that was the last time I would ever see it. That he was cutting me out of his will. Then after all that, he commanded me to help him push the chest back over the trap. And then you struck him. No, he struck me with his cane because I refused. Look, here it is, this broken cane. He broke it on my back. Oh, there's dried blood on it. My blood. I begged him to stop it. He, he just kept hitting me as though he'd gone mad. Finally, I... I grabbed him. I, I, I thought to stop him. I didn't even realize what I was doing. I, I hated him. I loathed him. And I was strangling him. When I let go of him, he was dead. And then you took the money? Yeah. Yeah, I, I hid it in another place. I had better use for the trap. It was to be Uncle Anatole's grave. I, I pushed him in. I closed the trap door and... Push the big chest back over it. Hans, there's only one way to find out. You mean move the chest? 
And look into the hole? No. It's the only way... No, I couldn't look at his face again. If he's not there, it means you never killed him. No, if he's not there, it means he's still alive. And that's more frightening than his being dead. Uh, oh, it's uh, not moving, not an inch. No, it won't budge. It, it's hopeless. We, we, we can't move it. Oh. Look, uh, Look, maybe I can use this big iron pipe. If I can get it under the edge of the chest and lift it, I'm uh, using it try, for try, a lever. Try. Here, give me a hand. Grab the other end of the pipe while I shove it under the edge. There. Now, let me get the other end and lift. Uh, uh, we moved several inches. Yeah. Again. Uh, uh, only. Again. Only. Only a few uh, inches more, honey. Uh, there. Oh. oh, it's off the trap door. Oh, it's the key. Have you got the key? It's not locked. I never locked it. Oh, open it. What? Uh, Hans! Uh, uh, he's gone. Anatole is gone. Hans, we can't stay here in this house any longer. What can we do? Where can we go? We can go to the police. No, 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 no. Not the police. If you did kill Anatole, and I still doubt that. You did it in self-defense. No, no, it was premeditated murder. It was on my mind for months. Hans, darling, don't condemn yourself. I killed him for his gold. Why don't you go to the police and tell them how he was beating you with his cane? I'll be convicted. Life imprisonment. Oh, Vicky. <gasps> Hans, look. What? Where? Those muddy footprints across the floor. Where? They're still wet. They are. Someone's been here while we were down in the cellar. Maybe he's still here. Vicky, Vicky, work your way toward the back door. Yes. You too. Oh, we know. What? Oh, we know. Oh. I know you're in there. Oh. Sniveling oh. mouse. Open oh, no. up or I'll beat you in and injure your reason. It's him. It's Uncle Anatole. I told you he wasn't no. dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's returned from the dead. Get out, Vicky. Run, run, please. I'll please. get help. I'll run. get help. Get out of here. Well, how long are you going to bar me from my own house? Let me speak to him, Shovenick. Perhaps I can make him listen to reason. Listen to reason? My stout cane will make him listen. Oh, but that's in the cellar where he buried me in the trap. Oh, good. You stay here, Anatole. I'll go around to the side break away and get in. Good idea, Conrad. Break this one. No, no, stay out. Well, well, my dear Hans, at last we meet face to face. Why do you keep your head down? <laughs> Afraid of me? No, 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 no. Go, go away, please. Shall I open the door and let your uncle in? No, please. Come, come. That's not very hospitable of you, considering it is his own house. <laughs> please don't let him in. He is in, Hans. In the hole you put him in after you killed him. <laughs> you did kill him, Hans. And stole all his money. That's true, isn't it? Yes, yes, I confess it's all true. Look up. Look at me. There, that's better. What? Jamie. J Jamie, no, but you're dead. You were killed in an accident. False identification, cousin. No, I'm very much alive. And cousin Jamie has come to collect his inheritance. What? Now, where did you hide it? Inheritance? Uncle Anatole's out there. I heard him. You seem to have forgotten my very special theatrical talents. I did the voice of Uncle Anatole. Listen. Stalling! Stalling! Never an honest day's work! I was also a new employer, George Congrave. It was you. You, yes. Vicky mentioned that name to you. Told you everything. That's how you knew. And now I want my money. I knew Uncle had the gold hidden someplace. I came here to find it. But I found that you had been here ahead of me. I could see where the chest had been moved in the cellar, and that's where I found our dear, dear dead uncle, Anatole, in the trap. Now, I know you have the gold, and I want it right now. It's mine. It was to be mine, he said. Do you want me to produce the body of Uncle Anatole? I can, you know. And you'd go up for life. But, but, but no buts. Give me the money, and I'll keep my mouth shut. I had no love for the old skinflint either. I just want my inheritance. Nothing I can do? Nothing. Just take me to the gold. All right, come with me. I've got it hidden in the cellar. See those old iron pipes piled over there? In there? Yes. 
I stuffed old waste paper, some rags, and scrap iron in the end of the pipe to conceal the gold. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. I searched this house from one end to the other the other night. I knew the gold was here. It was too heavy for you to carry away with you. But I never thought of the pipe. <laughs> well, now, let's see. Turn around, Jamie. What? Hans, put down that iron bar, Hans. Gold is mine. He promised it all to me. Look, I'll split it with you. Half for you. No. Ah! It's all mine. All mine now. I'm glad you could come. Oh, I never miss the second Thursday in each month, Doctor. I think he looks forward to it. Do you think he really knows? Well, sometimes I feel there is a glimmer, a slight glimmer. Uh, there he is. You've got him working with the gardener. He seems to like flowers. Hans? I don't think he knows his name. Let him see you. Hans? I brought you something. A present. Something sweet. Oh, thank you. You are a nice lady. Here's a flower for you. Yellow. Like a piece of gold. Chevenick had been walking on the narrow line between sanity and insanity and had finally fallen into the abyss. He remembers only one thing, one thing, stronger than anything else, stronger than memory, stronger than life, the glint of gold. I'll be back in a moment. A tale of greed, which destroyed the lives of four people. Anatole Chevnik returned to haunt the waking and sleeping of his nephew Hans. And the gold, which he hoarded for so many years, brought happiness to no one. Our cast included Alexander Scorby, Anne Petoniak, Gil Mack, and Sid Sloan. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. And what is the whole contract? That while a person owns this dark imp in the bottle, any request that concerns money, gold, or wealth, no matter how unreasonable, will be satisfied. And that to dispose of this creature and its spell, you must sell it for less than your original price. Oh, here. Seven dollars and forty. Five. Five dollars is enough. Okay. Cheap at nearly half the price. Oh, think first, Barry. Think. Remember, it will keep you rich as long as you live. But remember, too, if you do not sell it for less than you paid for it before you die, your soul will surely rot in hell for eternity. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.